Traditionally, upon taking the throne, a new sultan would eliminate his brothers to secure his reign. Yet, this practice saw a significant shift with Sultan Ahmed's rise to power. Being just 13 at his coronation and without any offspring, Ahmed's brother Mustafa stood as the sole alternative heir. Executing Mustafa would have jeopardized the empire's future should any misfortune befall Ahmed. This pivotal decision by Sultan Ahmed would forever alter the empire's approach to succession. Osman was born in Topkapi Palace, Constantinople, as the son of Sultan Ahmed and his consort Mahfiruz Hatun. The royal court was greatly reassured about the future leadership of the empire with his birth. Named in honor of Osman Ghazi, the illustrious founder of the Ottoman dynasty, his naming was celebrated with a week-long festival throughout Constantinople. He spent his childhood with his younger brother Mehmed, who arrived four months later. While Mehmed's mother's identity remains unconfirmed, it is commonly believed that she was Kosim Sultan. Osman's mother, Mafirus, likely passed away when he was about five years old. A close bond formed between Kosim and her stepson, Osman. She often included him and his brother in her carriage rides during her outings in Constantinople allowing him to be seen and recognized by the crowd. Sultan Ahmed died of typhus and gastric bleeding on the 22nd of November 1617. Ahmed's death created a dilemma never before experienced by the Ottoman Empire. Multiple princes were now eligible for the Sultanate, and all of them lived in Topkapi Palace rather than the usual provinces. Osman was too young to be enthroned without causing adverse comment among the populace. A court faction decided to enthrone his uncle Mustafa rather than him. This decision created a new succession principle of seniority that would last until the end of the empire. It was the first time an Ottoman sultan was succeeded by his brother instead of his son. After ruling for just 96 days, Mustafa was removed from power by another group within the palace who favoured his nephew Osman, claiming that Mustafa had mental health problems. Osman held a grudge against the state's leadership, from advisers to clergy and soldiers, feeling dishonoured by their conduct and often reacting excessively due to his youth. He admired his great-grandfather, Suleiman the Magnificent, and aimed to be celebrated as a conqueror. With high aspirations and bravery, Osman initiated a campaign against Poland, which had interfered with the Ottoman territories of Moldavia and Wallachia. Worried that his brother Mehmed might be used as a puppet in a revolt during his absence, Osman decided to have him executed before the campaign. Although the chief religious authority initially rejected his request, citing his father's newly established laws, Osman eventually secured consent from a subordinate judge. The Polish-Lithuanian forces fortified their position near Kotin Castle, halting the Ottoman advance until the early winter snows. The Ottomans retreated due to the late season and their losses, leading to a standoff reflected in a treaty with terms that were mixed for both sides. Osman publicly declared the battle an Ottoman victory. Upon his return to Constantinople, he was greeted with a victory parade and three days of celebrations. Yet, Osman was privately dissatisfied with the battle's outcome and the Janissaries' performance during the campaign. Osman took a hands-on approach to the Janissaries' payroll, scrutinizing every detail. This meticulousness was seen as groundwork for a potential crackdown on the Janissary ranks. Rumours swirled when Osman expressed a wish to undertake the holy pilgrimage to Mecca. 
suggesting he planned to overthrow the Janissaries using forces amassed in the east. These whispers culminated in a revolt by the Janissaries, leading to Osman's confinement in Istanbul's Yedikule fortress, where he met his end through strangulation. This marked a grim first in Ottoman history, a sultan executed by his own Janissaries. In the aftermath, Osman's uncle Mustafa reclaimed the throne, ruling for an additional year. The rivalry between the Janissaries and the Ottoman cavalry contributed to a tense atmosphere. The situation worsened with the Abazar rebellion, as Abazar Mehmed Pasha, the governor general of Erzurum, marched on Istanbul seeking justice for Osman's death, shaking the foundations of Mustafa's leadership. In an effort to quell the unrest, the authorities executed Grand Vizier Kara Davud Pasha, the man responsible for Osman's death. However, this action did not stop Abaza Mehmed's progression. In the end, religious leaders convinced Mustafa's mother to consent to her son's removal from power, on the assurance that Mustafa would remain unharmed. The 11-year-old Murad IV, son of Ahmed and Kosin, was enthroned on the 10th of September, 1623. For an extended period, Murad's reign was heavily influenced by his family members. In his initial years as Sultan, it was his mother, Kursum Sultan, who effectively governed on his behalf. During this era, the Safavid Empire launched an invasion into Iraq. Uprisings broke out across northern Anatolia, and in 1631, the Janissaries besieged the palace, resulting in the assassination of the Grand Vizier and several others. As Murad matured, he took matters into his own hands to address the lawlessness and rebellion within the empire. He took decisive and severe actions. He quelled the rebellion with intense violence. Determined to eliminate any potential dissent, he prohibited tobacco shut down coffee houses and sealed wine shops, punishing those who broke the rules or even those suspected of violations with execution. In his foreign policy, Murad took personal command in the continuing war against Iran and set out to win back territories lost earlier in his reign. Baghdad was reconquered in 1638 after a siege that ended in a massacre of garrison and citizens alike. In the following year, peace was concluded. A man of courage, determination, and violent temperament, Murad was the first Ottoman Sultan to execute the highest Muslim dignitary in the empire. He was able to restore order, however, and to straighten out state finances. However, Murad died of cirrhosis in Constantinople at the very young age of 27. The kafes, literally meaning cage, was the part of the imperial harem of the Ottoman palace where possible successors to the throne were kept under a form of house arrest and constant surveillance by the palace guards. When Ahmed's brother Mustafa was deposed for the first time, he became the first inmate of the kafes. It became common to confine brothers, cousins and nephews to the cage generally not later than when they left the harem at puberty. Upon ascending to the throne, Murad ordered the confinement of all his brothers in the kafes. His brothers Bayezid, Suleiman, Kasim, and Ibrahim lived strictly isolated from the rest of the world. Nevertheless, their existence remained a constant threat to Murad, who was acutely conscious of his brother Osman's previous deposition. During the celebrations of the Ottoman victory at Erevan in 1635, his brothers Bayezid and Suleiman were executed, leaving Kasim as the heir apparent to the Ottoman throne. Despite his efforts to appear humble and unambitious, Murad ordered Kasim's execution to eliminate any suspicion of a coup 
and to secure his own position as Sultan on the eve of leading his forces towards Baghdad in 1638. The execution of Qasim was the final act of brotherly homicide in the Ottoman Empire. Of Qasim's last surviving sons, the mentally unstable Ibrahim lived in fear of being the next of his brothers to be executed by Murad. On his deathbed in 1640, Murad told his mother of his disdain for his brother Ibrahim, saying that it would be better for the dynasty to end rather than continue with an heir who was insane. Following Murad's death from cirrhosis, Ibrahim was the sole surviving prince of the dynasty. When the Grand Vizier asked him to assume the Sultanate, Ibrahim suspected Murad was still alive and plotting to trap him. It took the combined persuasion of Qasim and the Grand Vizier to make him accept the throne. Qasim ordered his brother's corpse to be displayed before him and even threatened Ibrahim with strangulation if he refused to be crowned Sultan. With the accession of Ibrahim, Qasim once again became politically active as his principal advisor. Ibrahim's rule was characterized by extravagance and caprice. He was known for his obsession with the harem, which reached new heights of luxury during his time. The harem was filled with an unprecedented number of concubines, and Ibrahim was particularly known for his peculiar taste in women, which was indulged by his mother. Since he was the only surviving male member of the Ottoman dynasty, Ibrahim was encouraged by his mother to distract himself with harem girls and soon fathered three future sultans. The political landscape of the empire under Ibrahim was equally unstable. He was easily influenced by advisors and favorites, leading to erratic decisions that often contradicted each other. His reign saw the empire embroiled in wars with Venice and the maladministration of state affairs. The Sultan's erratic behavior and mismanagement eventually led to discontent among the Janissaries. In 1648, a coup was staged and Ibrahim was deposed and subsequently imprisoned in Topkapi Palace. The end of Ibrahim's reign came swiftly. With the consent of his mother, who had once been his staunchest supporter, Ibrahim was executed by strangulation. His death marked the end of a short and troubled reign that had brought the empire to the brink of chaos. <laughs>